just don't end up grinding coochies with my brother or I'll literally never talk to you again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Guys, I'm just gonna tell you how it is. We're watching a bad Netflix movie today. And I know what you're thinking. Netflix? Making a bad movie? <laughs> I don't think so. Well, to you, person that doesn't exist, it's true. And I'm a little bit late to the party on this one. We're gonna be watching The Kissing Booth, which came out in 2018. I didn't even know it existed until last week when I saw that the third Kissing Booth came out. And let me tell you, after watching the first one, which is almost two hours long, I cannot even fathom the idea of a second one, let alone a third one. Now let's just get right into it. The movie starts out introducing our protagonist, Elle, from the moment she's born as all movies do, then proceeds to show us her entire life story and also her becoming best friends with Lee, who is born at the same time. It's really cute. That's me, Elle Evans. And the smelly, less cute baby right next to me? That's my best friend, Lee. Now, I don't expect you guys to understand the genius writing that is making these two best friends have the same name, but just reversed, but it's the coolest thing I've ever seen. But this montage just shows us that they love to dance and are inseparable. <laughs> Then we meet Lee's older brother, Noah, high school legend who he lives in the shadow of. Don't worry, that'll come up a lot. I, saw you sliding out the bar. I, saw you I know what you're thinking. Noah Flynn is stupid hot. They also have these rules that they came up with when they were like six, and it's the movie's way of ripping off Zombieland in the lamest way possible. But Lee and I developed a list of friendship rules. Lee was responsible for rule number nine which specifically states relatives of your best friend are totally off limits. This is a really big one for Lee. I guess it comes from living in the shadow of a high school legend. Now, one of their rules is that Elle can't date Noah, which just goes to show you how healthy Lee's relationship with his brother and his best friend really are. Yes, Noah. I know he hates being called Noah. Oh, but don't call him Noah, even though that's just his fucking name. Yeah, that's Chris, but don't call him Chris. Then. What do I call him? I don't know, just don't call him Chris. Like Noah's just a normal fucking name. Now it's the first day of junior year and oh no, Elle rips her pants. What's she gonna do? She ends up wearing a skirt from ninth grade and well, <laughs> hijinks ensue. And by hijinks, I mean assault. One staring at you. <gasps> what the hell, Tuppin? Also, why is the school just so collectively horny? Oh, wait, oh, oh my word. <laughs> Yo, I think that's Elle Evans. <laughs> Everybody's looking at us. Oh, I'm gonna revise. Everyone is looking at you. <laughs> what? Then Noah punches the guy and then them two and, you guessed it, L get in trouble because she dressed like a big fucking slut, I guess. Hey, remember how close of friends L and Lee are? Well, if not, here's a reminder. Yeah. Oh, I wouldn't really call it a fight. <sighs> I can't think of anything grosser than sharing a sandwich with somebody. Like, in the way they're doing it. I get, like, cutting it in half, but not this. So now on to some actual plot. Elle and Lee come up with an idea for their attraction at the school festival. And what may that be? The kissing booth. But now they have to convince the student council to okay it. Kissing booth! Yeah, we want to do a kissing booth. I'd love if after they did this, they were just like, wait, what are you doing? Pick that shit up. But don't worry guys, they were able to convince them to okay it because they just promised that Lee's 30 year old looking brother will be working the booth. Hi. And how's my favorite little man? God, they're not helping the fact that he looks like a grown ass man by making him the toothpick guy. They can try all the tricks they want, but that Troy Bolton wig is not fooling me. How old is he actually? I'm really curious now. Oh, sick, he's 24. We're the same age. Now, tonight's the night of Noah's Big Bash, and everyone from school is gonna be there. Everyone from school is everywhere all the time in this movie. There is not a single person that is not invited to anything, but Elle still has to convince Noah to do the booth. And I guess it has to be Elle to convince him, and maybe not Noah's brother, Lee, but not before a conversation with the OMGs first. Hey, hey what's Gucci? <laughs> The OMGs are this movie's knockoff of the plastics from Mean Girls. Just like everything else this movie rips off from other movies, it's done in the lamest way possible. <laughs> you will love this. Tastes like green. Oh, no, no, I really don't drink. Just shoot it, girl! Oh, go, go, go! Get it, girl. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> I love this hoe! I love you! Go, go, go! Right now, go! Oh, yeah. 
Okay. <laughs> yes, honey, get it! I want whoever wrote their dialogue to be arrested. So Elle finally asks Noah, and he is not having it. Uh, so... Kissy? Absolutely not. So she just gives up and then gets absolutely wasted, strips on a table, and then passes out. Luckily, good guy Noah takes her up to his room and puts her to bed. The movie kind of uses this as a way to show that Noah is safe and can be trusted, which I get. But why make her sleep in your bed if he's just gonna go sleep in the guest room? Why not put her in the guest room? And of course he gives her his jersey to wear to bed because that's cute. But then to further the sexual tension, this happens. Noah. Ugh, Noah! Right, fine. I feel like a second take couldn't have hurt unless this was one of multiple takes, which I cannot imagine how bad the other ones were. <laughs> also, this line. Just get out, dork. Okay, yeah, yeah. So now Ellen Lee are back at school, which also only seems to have one teacher on duty all the time. When they do what all best friends do and get into a paint fight. Huh, I'm more of a slapstick guy myself. Really? <gasps> oh! I'm sorry. Is that the wrong color? <gasps> oh! <you're> <laughs> This is some of the dumbest and corniest shit I've ever seen. But after class, Elle has to go find a bathroom and get all this fucking paint off of her. <laughs> but since Elle's got paint all over her, she can't fucking see. And she finds herself in the boys' locker room, naked and covered in paint. But don't worry, good guy, overprotective, controlling Noah is there to save the day. But Elle is not having it. I need to leave. I told you before, stop messing around. I'll leave when I want to. You're not the boss of me, Noah. To protest this, she decides to dance naked in the boys' locker room. Next to this fucking predator of all people, he's in the movie so much more and everyone seems to have just forgotten that he is a fucking creep and slapped her ass. Finally, we get to see the kissing booth. And holy shit, that thing is put together so well. There's no way that didn't cost, like, the price of a new Kia Optima. But the kissing booth is a success. Everyone's loving it, and Lee even gets a girlfriend. Then we see one of the worst transitions I've ever seen in a movie ever. Like, they make it look like she's watching them kiss, and then the next shot is them walking up behind her. Whoa. I hope you like what you see. Hey, Elle. But now things get spicy when the OMGs try to trick Elle into kissing this disgusting, no-life, waste-of-space fucking nerd. God, isn't he gross? They try to make her think it's one of their exes and it'd be awkward or uncomfortable, so she does it. But wait, the plot thickens. Which, this movie could use a lot of plot thickener because it is... bad. Cutsies? What? Cutsies. I know me a dirty girl on. Thanks, dude. Please, guys, I've never... <laughs> Oh my god, she's gonna kiss Noah. Hmm. She kissed Noah, and sparks flew. Literally, one of the lights busts and sparks fly everywhere. And it's a cheap goddamn effect because all the lights are perfectly fine after this. They just added that in to make it interesting to look at. They didn't commit. So they kiss, Elle loves it, everything's good, but now she has to figure out how to tell Lee this because, remember, they've got that fucking rule. So when she finally does find Lee and tell him this, he says what any normal human person would say. It's, it's for charity, right? Yeah. I guess so. Just don't end up grinding coochies with my brother, or I'll literally never talk to you again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Then Elle runs home. Literally. <laughs> and she also runs like every normal human person runs. As I ran home, I wondered if our kiss meant anything to Noah. If I meant anything. But cool guy motorcycle Noah sees her running if you want to call it that, and takes her home. But then out of nowhere, a violent thunderstorm forces them to pull over and kiss. A lot. 
Ah, oh, shit, I almost forgot. They live in L.A. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's the fucking Predator guy, and if so, he has no business getting that drunk. Now I know I've talked a lot about how that predator guy is a creep, but this guy gives him a run for his money. He might even be creepier somehow. Looking good, Evans. Oh, um, thanks. We never did get to finish your skinny dip at Flynn's party. Oh, um, well, I was just, I was way too drunk that night, so. I can only assume he has nefarious intentions with her by the way he approached her and his smiling, and his talking, and just his overall existence is creepy. You know what you need? Hmm. Hot tub. Come on. Oh, no, that's okay, Warren. Come on, Evans, it'll be nice. No, Warren, Evans, okay. come on. Warren. Don't make me beg. Warren. Is any woman safe in this school, or is it just L that's constantly preyed on and attacked? Ah, <laughs> sick, L.A. Um, you know... We don't have to. No, it's okay. I always wanted my first time to be in public and on the side of a cliff. And in the middle of the night, they were attacked and killed by mountain lions. The end. So now Elle and Noah are secretly dating, and they're able to sneak around and hang out in Noah's house because it's the biggest house ever. But she also has a conveniently scheduled hangout with Lee at the same house right after this. So she has to jump out of a window and lands on a trampoline, falls in a pool, and it's, it's funny. But then the funniest thing happens... And Lee sees her in the pool with her clothes on, and so he jumps in the pool with his clothes on too. <laughs> Oh, hey, I think you gotta text from someone. I'll see who it's it is. Okay, I got it. Be I'll get it. Why, is it from a boy? <laughs> yeah, right. Since when do you have a lock on your phone? Now, if anything, this whole sneaking around thing is just showing how weird Ellen Lee's friendship actually is. Then there's some more sneaking around with Ellen Noah. They fuck in a classroom on a desk. But wait, it's all on tape. Or disc, or I don't know. I'm so sorry. I just thought it was gonna make a little bit of fog. Okay, now I know I'm not one to nitpick, except like every second on this YouTube channel, but you're telling me that her plan to get this video footage of her fucking no on a desk. Conveniently included that there's only one camera in the entire school, and it's in that classroom, and then all the footage gets burned onto a disc that is conveniently held in the principal's office she's being reprimanded in, and for him to turn around and her be able to pull a Marty McFly and get that tape. I'm not buying it. So now the plot thickens even more. It's still not thick though. <laughs> Noah's working on his motorcycle because he's cool. And then L cuts her face in the garage somehow, and then he's patching her up in his room. But not without Lee just fucking barging in without knocking, because I guess that's what he does. Doesn't surprise me. He's annoying as fuck. Hey. What's going on in here? And his first thought isn't that they're sneaking around behind his back. His first thought is actually that Noah just hit her. Jesus, what happened to your face? Oh, I, I had an accident, and Noah offered to help. Did you do that to her? Because he likes to fight, he probably hit her. Like, when has he ever proven that's something he would do? He's only ever just, like, fought people that hurt her. And not only the fact that he just thinks this in the first place, he not only doubles down, but triples down on the idea that he hit her. <laughs> no, 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 it's Lee, I'm fine. I just I tripped in the garage, and I was looking for you.
You really expect me to believe that she just tripped? Get a clue, Lee. You weren't even here. I swear to God, if you laid a hand on that head. But after that close call, Noah and Elle decide they gotta be more careful about this thing. They can't be getting caught. Just kidding. They go right back up to that room two minutes later and start making out. What the fuck? And what do you know it? Lee fucking does this thing again. <laughs> what did you guys expect? He doesn't knock. But at that moment, all I cared about was Lee. And now she's lost her only two forms of transportation. Wait. Who the fuck is that kid? I don't think I've seen him the entire movie. Not sure who signed off on putting a picture of a 16-year-old girl naked in the boys' locker room on a giant banner in the middle of prom, but they need to be fired. Yeah, we spent $26,000 on that. Do you think we just get rid of it? Thank you, next up. Okay, wh what did he even do wrong? Like, yeah, he pinned Lee down, but Lee was freaking out. Other than that, he's done nothing that Elle hasn't done wrong this entire movie. Listen, I just came to say I'm sorry about what happened on the lawn the other day. And for everything with Elle. I never should have been lying to you. But I wanted you to know that I was never playing Elle. And I meant everything that I said to her tonight. Yeah, the further I get into this movie, the less I side with Lee. Not that I even liked him in the first place, but he is just becoming worse and worse this entire movie. Every person is being the bigger person but him. <sighs> I'm getting too into this movie. Why is this goddamn predator here? He's like at their family birthday party. Oh, what's wrong? Hey, you're acting all weird. You're being weird! I think you're making a big mistake. And that's my decision to make. <sighs> okay, <laughs> I have to find him, uh, like now. <laughs> it's okay, I'll help you find him, okay? Um, okay, let me go just make sure my dad knows where I'm going, okay? Meet you outside five, and you can okay. drive the stay. Thank you, I love you so much. Go, go, go. Thank you. Hell yeah, let's go. <laughs> God, I fucking hate my brother so much. You know what? I just, I think the hardest part was just seeing Noah's face at prom. Gosh, I wish I just told him then. But you know what? No matter how he feels now, I've just got to find him and tell him how I feel. You just did. <laughs> okay, cute bit and all, but there's no way she didn't notice Logan Paul wearing Lee's costume. <laughs> this guy's like seven feet tall. It's literally pretty Squidward wearing that mask. Anyways, happy ending. They kiss like five more times and then Noah goes off to Harvard, I guess. You know, guys, I would say that this movie could have benefited from not being an hour and 40 minutes long, but that would be ignoring the much more obvious fact that this movie just could have not been made at all. But if you did like the video, go ahead and give it a like rating down below. Let's me know you enjoy it, and it helps out the channel a bunch. And I will see you guys next time. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.